want to give you thanks for this opportunity that you've us to be able to just come and meet with you there. Uh, just to corporately join me today as your body, Lord. I, I thank you for the, the wondrous uh, things you've done here uh, dead by one. Bless us with the third anniversary of the celebration here in God. All the people that are here would bless you. And I just pray that you would speak to our hearts, that you would part your Holy Spirit. You would open our ears and our eyes just to receive you. That it be uh, nothing of us, that it be all about you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you've done on the cross. And uh, we just lift up all the children, everybody that's serving, all the people that are here, Father God, that we would just come here expecting. We give you thanks and honor and praise. And uh, all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.
Hey, so are you going to do an answer? That's pretty good. How's everyone doing? So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a weird day for me. Um, I'm really excited because um, three years ago, we started a small home-based ministry. And we stand up here today and I look out to many different people. And, you know, my heart just, it's just, it's just I, I don't know how to explain it. So um, I want to just lift this up in prayer really quick. And then we're just going to do some announcements and welcome everyone. Our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, we thank you for three glorious years just allowing us to glorify your name daily, Father. Father, we thank you for all the blessings you give us, Father, daily. Father, through the trials, we still thank you, Father, for you are great and mighty. Father, today is a blessed day, Father. You've given us three years just to glorify you, Father. But we know the time is short, Father, and that's what we're here to do. So tonight, Father, I ask that you lift this building up and all the words that come out of this building, just be a, a whisper to your ear, Father, a, sing, a, a sweet, a sweet, blessed wind, Father, to your ears, Father. Father, you gave your son for us, Father. And we, every day, that blood that shed saves us, Father. We love you. Your grace is sufficient, Father. We love you, Father. This night to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, even I get choked up, but people know I don't get choked up too often. Um, I want to welcome everybody for the first time, people that are here, and for people who are returning, and for people I haven't seen in a while. Um, it's definitely a good night. So we have a lot of things going on tonight. We have food, we have fun, we have games, we have game tables. Um, most of all, I'm going to point something out. A year ago, uh, two years ago, we started this. We came to this building. This cross was up here, and it was signed by everyone who was here. And it blesses my heart to see everyone, or most of everyone who signed it, still here today and praising the Lord. So I just want to say that and maybe give you guys some words of encouragement for it. Um, all right, so first of all, July 17th at 7 p.m., Third anniversary potluck. Oh, we're here. Okay, that's good. Next, uh, July 26th at 7.30, we have something called the Lounge. Uh, we started it for an inside ministry-based thing, but now we're going out. We're actually handing out flyers to everybody, and we're opening it up to everyone to come in here. And it's kind of like a loungy feel. Couches, music, hangout, coffee's provided. You know, everything's free. Just We ask that you guys come out and enjoy it and uh, be part of it. And then on August 17th, we have what we call a beach day baptism. And what Pastor Abraham has done is, um, in this building, I don't know if you guys know, there's several ministries here. We have the Joshua Center, which has Pastor Regis in the back. He's uh, the pastor over that. Um, we have um, Spirit of Joy. Right, I don't see them here yet, but they're on the way, I think. Um, but they have Spirit of Joy. We have Candace's, uh, where's she at? I know, I see you back there, Heidi. She's in the back, and that's the Young People Corporation, which is a daytime school. Um, when we started a year ago, there was two people here glorifying God, and now we have several ministries glorifying God under one house and unified to glorify God. Amen? And then, most of all, I want to uh, mention somebody, and um, the reason why I'm going to mention him is I want you guys to see how devoted people are to the Lord. Pastor, can you stand up, Pastor David Escobar, please? Pastor David Escobar, standing up right here about six months ago? It was a little before I left for Lebanon. Started a ministry here um, on Sunday nights, and it was a Spanish ministry. And, you know, the Lord has, you know, blessed us with so many things, but most of all, blessed us with a man of God who is faithful. It has been a struggle, but praise the Lord, he's still here. And he's still praising the Lord, as I know he will always. And any of you who speak Spanish and all that, I encourage you to come out and listen to him. I barely speak Spanish, and I've been there, and I'm touched constantly. So I want you guys to know that as well. Also, Pastor Regis, you guys have heard him speak here. He rattles the room. So, <laughs> uh, and then, yeah. 
So, going back to all the ministries here. On August 17th, we have what we call Beach Day Baptism. So, um, several years ago, I'm not going to give you guys how long ago it was, I was baptized in the Pacific Ocean. And there's nothing like being baptized in the Pacific Ocean. One, it doesn't matter how big you are, at the time I was 400 pounds, that still was able to be baptized in there. So, but the good thing is all the ministries here have decided to join together and unify to have that day um, and invite their congregations out to fellowship. Not only fellowship, but if they're choosing to be baptized, you know, there's also, I do believe we have a list in the back for you to sign up. We want to make sure you guys know what's going on. Okay. It starts at 10 a.m. in the morning. And I do believe it's still Dana Point. It's not written on there, but am I right? Yeah. And, thank you. It's still at Dana Point. Um, so I want to encourage everyone to come out and fellowship. Okay. Um, the baptism part is just an extra blessing to all of us to be there to see other people join Christ's army. So... Right now, I want to again welcome everybody, and I'm going to ask Pastor Abraham to come on up. And uh, he has his own microphone, so I'm going to step down. so holy, Lord, and you are so good. And Father, I pray tonight that you just touch our hearts in a mighty and special way, God, that you just reveal yourself in a glorious and magnificent way like never before, Lord, that you speak to our hearts. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit just falls upon this place, God, that you anoint each one of us to just have eyes open for you and to look at our life and just examine our life, God, and to not be afraid to examine our life. Just look to you and ask for help, Lord. Each one of us, God, is dealing with struggles and storms. Father, we know that there's victory in your name. And we praise you, God. I pray tonight, God, that you just show yourself that we can just have fun and have the family unity and love glorifying you first and foremost. May you always get all the glory, for you are holy, holy, holy. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please say hello to somebody out there. Thank <laughs> you. 
guys don't mind, just try to move it forward. Honestly, it's a fun aspect. church, I come to um, Spirit of Joy, Sunday, September. And I just want to tell you that God has been so good and awesome that it's changed my life completely. Um, I've been spiritual, but I'm extremely spiritual now, and happy and enjoyed to the fullest life. Um, I want to read a little poem for you guys tonight. It's, it says, living today. Today is a gift, embrace it with joy and anticipation. Realize the possibilities. It beacons you towards your destination in life. Be at peace. You are exactly where you are. You are exactly where you are meant to be at this moment. Stepping stones of what is to come. Making the most of today. Focus on the presence. You will see and appreciate things you might otherwise miss. Follow your heart. Search to find your purpose in life. I'm sorry, I'm so <laughs> Follow your heart. Search to find your purpose in life and you will find meaning and happiness. Use your talents. Do your best. Contribute, make a difference because you can. Be passionate about your journey. 
sing, dance, love, love as you go. Give praise and allow time for prayer. The premise of tomorrow begins with endurance of today. Do not let the fast forward pace of the world deprive you from savoring the now. Seek things that will fill you with love and bring you joy. Have faith, it fastens hope, it makes a difference. Believe God that all things are possible. Live well, live today, for it is a gift. Amen. And Michelle Kenyon. Michelle Kenyon. There she goes in the back. By the way, we have the exact same birthday. <laughs> and she has five kids that have zero. <laughs> My name is Michelle. I started coming here last year, September. Um, my friend Mariah, she was very persistent, kept on bugging me and calling me, come with me, come with me, and said, no, 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 I'm going to my church. And one day I just gave in, and the Lord ordered my steps here, opened doors, opened, let my one, opened their doors here for me, and me coming here consistently, and the Lord opened other doors for me with pa Pastor Regis and Pastor Shonda. Um, the Lord's been working in my life. You know, He saved me from going to jail for a long, long, long time. Pastor Abe and Pastor Regis and Pastor Shonda have been praying for me. Their prayers kept me out. <laughs> um, I have so much joy in the Lord right now. I don't, the Lord's been working wonders in my life. He's blessed me with a great career. Um, he is working in my life. I, I can't even explain how. It, it's just overjoy you know and there's this um, Psalms 23 I always say to myself every day the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want you know the Lord's with us and if we're living the righteous life with him he's going to take care of all our needs everything we have we have our trials but it's okay the Lord gets us through them and he makes us lie down in creek pastures he leads us by still waters He guided, he, he, yeah. I just got, he's just done so much. And I, I'm just so thankful. Um, I have a five-month-year-old baby. Um, I'm nervous being up here right now. I think this is people who are going to be here. <laughs> and I just thank the Lord for allowing me to be here and for allowing me to, to be in, led by one in Joshua Center. Um, I just wanted to just thank the Lord, just thanks and thank him for opening doors for me and for being here.
cannabis as a method. I appreciate it. for just a moment, guys. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. So tonight, what I really want to say is that as looking at the church with all that love, and God has had me crying and fasting last week and this week, not to say I've done anything. But he was working on me, and he was yielding the flesh. So today, coming here is an honor because you are the church that God loves so much. When you look back at the children of Israel, how God spoke to them through the spine, and that quiet little voice told me, I don't know, but it's see a God. And then when God talked about the church here, so God said, and we're going to go to Ephesians 3, and he's going to show you that same love that he gave to the Israelites, that you are the church. So I'm coming from the New Testament and Ephesians. And we're sort of gonna go like, it's not even that long, but he's gonna exert the power and he's gonna break the yokes, but he's gonna reveal his revelation power. In Ephesians 3.10, he says here, to the intent that now, the manifold wisdom. Now, we don't understand every word, and you gotta be a studier, you gotta be a prayer to ask God to break down every word, and every word is life. Manifold, having many and various forms and future parts, and so then that's the manifold wisdom, okay? And then when we break down wisdom from God, this is wisdom from God, that God is talking to the church. And this is Paul, who's from Ephesus, and who was the teacher, the preacher, to preach to the church, because now you are the chosen men and women of God. And then with wisdom, it's a learning and a knowledge, all right? And when God gives you the wisdom and the knowledge, he gives you wisdom of the ages. And when we think about the ages, we have to go and look up the time, okay? And ages is an indefinite time, unlimited duration in which things are considered and happening in the past, the present, and the future. So all the things that happen in your past, as Dad always says to me, it's done, it's over. And the things of the present right now, God is teaching you because he's preparing you for the future. He's preparing you for his glory to be with him because you are here and a special people and he's broken off every yoke because he loves you and he sent his son Jesus. Now back to the text. So then after he said that and we break that part down then he goes, now he goes to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. Who is the church? Are you the church? Yes. Are you the church? Yes. Are you the church? Get it! Oh, my. 
my God, it's so awesome. All right, the church is, it's, it's just beautiful because you have the love from the Lord. And then he said, wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principality and powers. Okay, let's stop right there. Okay, so when he breaks it down, he goes, principality, the rape, divinity, or jurisdiction of a prince. God is letting you know that there's a prince that died for you and that there's no sin, that there's no pain in your heart that he cannot heal because he loves you that much. There's no shackle that can hold you back. None of your past things, they've all been forgiven and now you're in the present. It's a blessing. And then the next thing when we break down the power, when it says right here, when it goes, when he says right here, the powers in heavenly places. Okay. The power right there is a spirit of divinity. So when you understand that God is higher than any situation or any circumstance that's down here on earth that may plague you, that nothing, no weapon formed against you shall prosper because you are the church. And because God has called you, he has chosen you, he sent the Messiah Jesus to die on the cross and to break every yoke. And you are healed by his stripes that he bore for you. So right now, you have to believe it. And when you walk out these doors, you have to realize that God is in control. And when you come in this building, his glory and his presence is here. When you come here, come expecting to hear a word. Come expecting to hear from this pastor, that pastor, from this pastor, that God will break every yoke, that you are a people that he chose. And you have to believe that God is real. And you have to study, you have to pray, you have to get up every day seeking God's face and knowing that God is real. And having that love and joy inside of you in spite of every situation. It's not easy for any of these men of God or any of us to get up here because the enemy is pulled out, but that's okay. We got a God that's greater, that died. And so to conclude with that part, to go into the school, but just to say this, that God said that I sent my love. God said I sent my love. Seek my face and know that I am with you. Seek with all your heart, I am knocking. Open that door and I will heal every past wound, every past hurt with my blood that is shared by on the cross for my church. And God says, he loves you. God, everything is a time, help me out of So just to give a little brief synopsis on how we came to this building, um, God said um, to build a church. And I was at another building for six years, but then one day we're looking at the computer and Pastor Abraham had his, was at another building and he had uh, added there for reading out some rooms or offices or whatever. But then when I was getting ready to call, God speaks audibly and this is his church. And he said, say church. I heard him over here say church. I said church. And then when I got ready to call, and I'm asking all these other questions to his secretary, God said, say church. So I go, okay, say church. And when I said church, they took the number and passed away and called. And then we went to his office that was up on Foothill, and we prayed in there four times. And I want to say to you, that's when God solidified, led by one, that means being led by one spirit. By one spirit. And so that when we're going to embark upon this journey, we can't be divided. So we prayed, and then we began to build a building. Pastor Abraham works four jobs, and he got a package with this building and the other building. And so to build this building, we had to fast, we had to pray, and he would call me two or four, level every time in the morning, God would always have me awake and have to pray, and I never had sleep, and I just fast and pray, and I was like, oh God, <laughs> this is awesome. But then this is for his church. And so what I'm saying, did you hear him say, this building is for his church? So he's speaking to you. He spoke church 
and that's how precious that you are. And I'm going to say quickly in this part and go to school. The key point to, to being together with led by one is this. He was held up by all of his family and core people of led by one. Without Dad Bertella, Mom Bertella, Chucky, Gina, and Azar, without a doubt. They prayed, they stood with and me too. Mom always made sure and Dad made sure that they prayed with me. And Mom always made sure I ate because I never had time to cook. She always bought my clothes because I never had time to shop. You guys think that's funny, but I had no sleep. So I thank you for a family. And when I needed Chucky to pray with me or Azar, they stood with me. So I just want to say to you, this building is of God, and it is his church. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I didn't know that we were going to embark upon a journey to the school. Like he just kept saying church. But then God said, now it's time for the school. And so the school is a private school, K through 12, and it's uh, also a learning center. And the key point to it is it's all about God. Kids will learn the Bible from the beginning to the end. And number one, it's a college prep. So being college prep, that means that all the material is bought for that student at his level, and then we do testing. Pastor, we just, he knows about it because he's done this for many years. And it's a great program. It's an awesome program. And so he can you know, vouch for that. So I want to say to you that I'm going to go around and I will have just a little parent form if you're interested. And then this history form is just a help because we are going to do a great, magnificent, you know, education PE situation for all the kids. And we're about from the spirit all the way to the help. So that's the key. We're body, soul, and mind. That's for God. So thank you so much for being men and women of God. And, Thank you so much. The last quick testimony will be Pastor Regis. Amen. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I don't need a microphone. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like uh, John and his brother, you know, Sons of Thunder, so uh, you can hear me without a mic. God gave me a built-in amplifier. Um, well, the first thing I do want to say, first of all, you know, let's give a hand clap to Pastor Ray. Uh, he, he, he's, uh, you know, he's become my brother. We've known each other. Uh, actually, we met in July of last year, and so it's been a year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing that God would bring uh, my family and I. We traveled 1,622 miles uh, to come move into a place that we knew nothing about. And uh, Pastor Abraham and his family has opened up their arms and their heart and received us. And we thank God for you guys uh, making us feel welcome in Southern California. And uh, we love you for that. And uh, we will forever be indebted to you for that. Um, Pastor Abraham asked me when I come and I'm going to do offering. But uh, before I do offering, I just want to say, you know, you've done a great job here, man, since I've known you, and uh, and I've seen, you know, many of the people, and I've seen uh, God touch many of you guys, and, and some of you, you know, you're still clawing trying to get there, but, you know, you're in the process, and uh, so I just want to commend Pastor Abraham for, you know, working full-time jobs, not just a full-time job, he does so much, and he's trying to keep this thing together, and, and he's trying to be your leader, and uh, so we thank God for him and, and all the family led by one uh, uh church family uh, that's here. We love you guys. Uh, my wife, Pastor Shonda, uh, we appreciate you guys for receiving us and allowing us to be in this building. Because if, if it had not been uh, for God touching you guys and uh, also uh, Sister Candice, uh, we wouldn't be here. And so we just thank God for you. And uh, we really appreciate uh, what God has done, you know, in our life and in our ministry. And the Joshua Center has developed and uh, we've grown and uh, we almost to the place of graduating from this place into Ontario. Uh, and we thank God for that opportunity he's given us. All right. So, I'm not going to take up any more time, uh, but I'm the person that's doing offering. I just want to just kind of throw a couple scriptures at you. Uh, you might not even be familiar with these scriptures, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. Uh, there's a scripture in Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. And it's the story about Jesus Christ's ministry. And Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus Christ was an evangelist. You know, Jesus Christ traveled all over the Galilean area. He went everywhere. He, he, was, he was literally you know, uh, presenting, you know, himself, you know, to humanity that he was the Christ without even just really verbalizing. He was just doing a lot of miraculous things. 
But what was so important about Jesus' ministry is that even though Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, Jesus Christ needed people to take care of his ministry financially. The Bible says there were women that ministered to Jesus Christ financially. You know, they supported his ministry financially. You know, Pastor Abraham, uh, you know, when I first came here up until now, you know, offerings is not something that, you know, I saw happening here. You know, nobody wasn't taking up offerings and, you know, it wasn't something because that, that wasn't his thrust and that's not his thrust right now. You know what I mean? But, you know, if, if, if there's going to be a Bible study here, is there going to be multiple churches here? If there's going to be anything that's going to amount to anything, it's going to take a collaborative effort. It's going to take people working together, you know, I mean, physically and financially. You know, of course, you know that everything in this world costs something. Everything costs something. And it takes money to do everything that we do. You know, we're here right now. The lights are burning. It's cool in here. It's not 100 degrees in here. You know, we have tables out there, and people have bought food because of the potluck, and it's a celebration. I mean, but is it fair for one person to share to, to carry the burden of something of this magnitude? No. You know, so it, it's important that we understand God's system. You know, the Bible talks about in Malachi chapter 3, you know, the Bible tells us clearly in Malachi chapter 3 for us to bring our tithes and our offering into the storehouse so that may be meeting God's house, meaning that God's house can be taken care of. You know, our tithe is our covenant. Tithe is 10%. It's 10% of whatever your gross income. You know, we first have to have covenant with God. And when we have covenant with God, we love God. We don't give to God out of law. We give to God out of love and out of our commitment to Him. And so I just want to encourage everybody here tonight, you know, I mean, whatever gift, whatever financial gift, you know, that you feel led in your heart to sow into led by one ministry, you know, I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, Pastor Abraham, he doesn't have an offering plate around begging for money or anything like that. But you know what? It's an opportunity for you to bless the house, and it's an opportunity for you to be blessed. You know, the Bible says in, uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, I think it's chapter 11, it says that as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest will be in full effect. And so when we sow our seed, you know, just as we sow seeds to the natural, we look for a harvest, right? In any farmer that sows a seed, he sows the seed in ground, and when he sows the seed in the ground, he looks for a harvest. And so we're sowing the seed into this ground, led by one ministry. We believe that God is going to bring a harvest to us because we believe in the work that God has attempted to do here through his people. You know, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if sometimes we, we become mystical and, uh, you know, we kind of like think God's like some smog floating, floating around in the galaxy, but God is very strategic, you know, and everything that God says, he means exactly what he says. And so we want to make sure that we are operating in the principles of the kingdom. We give to God because we love God. We give to God's work because we love God's work. You know, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And so tonight, I want you to give God your best gift. Whatever that gift may be, I want you to give that to the Lord. You know, as you're giving it to this ministry, you're giving it to God. And so if you, if you believe in what Pastor Abraham, uh, along with many other you that started this ministry three years ago, if you believe in it, You'll support it, not only tonight, you'll continually support it so that this ministry can blossom and do even more. There are many ministries that are developing out of this ministry. Uh, Pastor Abraham, it's in his heart. Uh, uh, they started doing homeless ministry. And there are many other things, the lounge, you know, which is a place that they want to create here uh, so people can come and feel comfortable and just kind of hang out in a safe, godly place. And, you know, these things cost money. And so, you know, don't, don't let it just be a one-time deal tonight. You know, let it be something that you commit. If it's not every week, once a month, that you commit and say, you know what, I'm going to give $10 to that ministry. I'm going to give $20 to that ministry. Because you know what, they're trying to do something that's going to bring change in this region. And it's all for the glory of God. How many of you believe that? Amen. So, so how many of you have been touched by this ministry? Let me see your hand. If you've been touched in some way or another by this ministry, whether you got saved or on your way to get saved, whatever it may be, you have the responsibility to participate in helping the upkeep of this ministry. You have the responsibility. Those women that followed Jesus, they followed Jesus and they gave to Jesus' ministry because Jesus ministered to them. You know, it, it might not be Pastor Abraham every week. It may be me. It may be Pastor David. It may be Candace. It may uh, be Pastor Gabriel, one of these guys that, that speak. But, but it's still a fun to live by one. It's still a place to where you can come and you can receive the Word of God. You know, so I want you to give God your best seed tonight. 
I want you to give, you God, give God your best seat tonight. And so as you prepare your seat, uh, we have Brother Mark and Brother a a Azar there. They're going to they're gonna come around and they're going to pass the offer buckets. And uh, if, you, if you have checks, make your checks payable to Led by One. Uh, this is a non-profit uh, 3C ministry. It is correct, right, Pastor? Amen. Let, make, it, make it payable to Led by One. And as you make uh, your checks or credit card donations, uh, you can go to the website and you can give your donation immediately uh, because this ministry, God is going to continue to elevate this ministry. God is going to continue to bless this ministry. And this ministry is going to do great things for the glory of God continually. So dig deep in those pockets and, and, and give something sizable that's going to make a difference tonight. Amen? Amen. So why are you doing that? Come on. shall I live? And what will happen when I pass away? And each one of us here has those deep questions. And if you don't understand 
science or God and what's happening, you know, you're, you're going to fall into this rabbit hole which is never ending where you feel like your life is dead or meaningless or purposeless. And you're just running the rat race. And all of a sudden you get so complacent in life that all of a sudden you feel like, you know, you feel hopeless. A storm comes, you get taken away and things happen. And so, the, the wisest man in Scripture, King Solomon, you guys know King Solomon? Yes. He said that a life apart from God is nothing. Nothing. This man had everything going. Everything going. He had a thousand wives, 700 wives, 300 concubines. He had a castle. He had money. He had glory. He had, he had pride. He had the top position. And he realized that all that meant nothing after his, the end of his life. And he said, you know what? Life without God is nothing. It's empty. It's empty. So I want to pose questions to you guys. Because ultimately tonight, it comes down to your walk today. If we say that we believe in God, that's great. We believe in God. But even the demons believe in God and they tremble. The question is, where's your walk today? And I ask this question because I'm very glad this. But I ask this question because ultimately it comes down to this. It comes down to this. It's between you and God and no one else. And nobody else. Not your family, not your friends, not your work. And one day when you're standing before the Lord and He's right there in front of you, He's going to come before you and say, either you're with me or you're not. You're with me or you're not. I say, come in my good and faithful servant. Or I'm sorry. I don't know you. Get away from me. You call me Lord, Lord, but I don't know you. You know, America has been so marketed. And the marketing of America has been so satanic, it's drawn us away completely from the trueness of a committed believer in life. If I can ask you right now in your mind, if you can picture in your head, would someone would look like if they were a committed believer to Jesus? If you can put in your mind an image of a committed believer to Jesus Christ, what would that look like? And how does your life compare to that? How does it compare to that? And one of the major things in life, it's okay, I'm going to light. I need to test that. Thank you very much. Test. One of the major things in life, what it comes down to is, is your walk. It's your relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to say this to you guys over and over and over. The world will do whatever it can to draw you away. It will entice you. It will entice you. And draw you far away from God. It will do whatever. It will use your family, your friends. It will use work. It will use the people that are closest to you. And it will also use a lot of temptation. Temptation. So when we look at the word temptation, as an example, it talks about being enticed. And the original meaning of, of the word enticed, it means to hunt. It's, it's a hunting term or a fishing term. I can't use this mic, actually. Can you hear me back there? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it's, it's a fishing term that deals with something with a hook. It's about hooking somebody in, okay? So I'm gonna use an example. It's a fishing term that deals with being hooked. And so what it comes down to is Satan has his ways. He's very provoking, you know? And for you animal activists, this is not a real worm. Alright? So what, it, what happens is it's a gummy bear worm. But Satan has a way to dangle things right in front of you. Do whatever he can to draw you away from truth. He will use everything possible in his way to make you fall away or not commit yourself and be a light to people that you can be used for. This ultimate, the ultimate glory in life, the ultimate purpose, the ultimate meaning in life is to glorify our Heavenly Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is to glorify Him. And so what happens is Satan, kind of like the fish, he'll take it and he'll just kind of like dangle it in front of the fish. And right when the fish grabs on, he reels them in and slowly pulls them away. You know, so we see this little fish is being dangled, or a little worm, a gummy worm. And maybe to a kid, they may go for it. And slowly you draw them like a carrot. 
But that maybe for us, it's, it's not this. But do you think that, that the devil gives up if, if we don't get the first thing? No. Right? That's right. Does, does, does he give up at all? No. Maybe if we had something else, like 20 bucks, you might think, oh, maybe. Maybe it's $20. <laughs> Maybe, you know, 20 bucks. It's like, you know, somehow, some way, like the, the devil's always dangling something in front of us to do whatever he can to draw us away. And that's why at times we're so on fire for God. Maybe at one point in your life, you were so on fire for the Lord. And something happened, a storm occurred, or, or maybe life became stressful because you got your eyes off focus of Jesus Christ. And he starts sinking, and then more things start coming, whether it's, it's, a, it's a man or a girl or, or something's happening. The devil will always try to pull you apart. He'll do whatever he can to get you out of church. He'll do whatever he can to get you out of the family. He'll do whatever he can to make you feel like God's not really with you. And you lose that peace and that true joy. And, you know, and, and living in California, in Southern California more so, temptation is all around us. I mean, it's, that's not even a good reflection of, of what we deal with being regarded. But if anything, it's, it's more like this, if I can show you. It's more like, well, I had it here somewhere. <laughs> Marine, you see how? Right yeah. there, no? In the corner? Where? Um, yeah, never mind. I don't know what happened to me. Uh, anyhow. Whatever it is that we're dealing with, can't find my prop, the main prop, for some reason. We will do it anyway. It's not there. But ultimately, what it comes down to is this. We will be drawn away my everything's it's okay. It's all right. Sorry, don't mind that. It's okay. Do you see it? Yeah, I did. Is it real? Wow. I'm alive. Oh my gosh, it's right here. Anyhow, we just want Southern California for the most part. We're constantly around a lot of temptation. Now, I think somehow for that reason. This is kind of like what we're up against. <laughs> this is kind of like our life. Again, making it really short is I want to have you guys, when you guys walk out of this room this time, it is, it between you and God is to say, you know what, Lord? I want to recommit my life. You know, I want to get stronger. I realize that I allowed compromise in my life. And it's holding me back from, from people that in, in my life, in my family, my own soul, my kids, my friends. Like, like what I once had, I want to be used again. That desire that I once felt how close to you. Forgive me, Lord, and reach, and just give me the strength that I need. And you know what? Let me tell you something. God has an amazing desire to have that relationship with you. When, when God created us, it was for a relationship, to have that oneness. When God walked with Adam, he was in complete fellowship with God. And then sin enters and it separates us. And a lot of times, what, what we think is since, you know, we grew up with this stuff. We don't even know, what's, you know what it is. And we're constantly being marketed everything to pull us from God. And all I want you guys to do tonight as we go and celebrate our anniversary 
is to walk out and say, you know what? I need to recommit my life to Christ. I need to examine my life. You know, I don't want you guys leaving here and having a, a full stomach and leaving, but I want you guys to leave with, with something even deeper. We can easily sway away, whether it's guys or girls or money or position or even diplomas or the things that matter most to us. We get pulled away when, when, when our number one priority is not Jesus Christ. You guys agree to that? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, hearing these testimonies in closing soon, you know, God, our Lord, our Savior, He is so real. He is so real. And I mean real beyond a doubt. And so what the scriptures say is that Jesus Christ right now is in His throne room. And a lot of times what happens is when we're, when we're praying to God, we kind of box God. He's like, he's something so small. He's like our genie, per se. You know, when we talk about commitment to Christ, it's not so much just commitment, but it's submission to Christ. And so when we're looking at Jesus Christ up in heaven, it's like when I'm praying to God, I'm picturing Christ like he is now in, on his throne where you have elder is there just bowing down before this holy presence where Jesus Christ is just so bright and there's lightning and thunder and these creatures just saying holy, holy, holy and how real God really is. And a lot of times we just we're, we pray for the of God to do this but it's like our, our true faith in Christ is like it's questionable. America's watered down guys. We need to rise up as a church and be the church. If there's unforgiveness, we need to start forgiving. You know, everything in this life is going to draw us close to Christ if we surrender. If we surrender. Jesus Christ, He loves us. Our Father wants to just hold us. He wants to have, have us have that peace that surpasses all understanding. He wants to give us that joy that, that and He promises us. But we're not letting Him because we're letting everything else in our life come first. And so I'm just going to ask you guys tonight, if you guys desire for prayer, to recommit your life, or just for strength in certain areas, and that's Pastor Regis and myself to be up here, we're going to be up here and just having a moment of prayer. But you guys, after we pray, we'll be excused, but we'll be up here still. You know, I love you guys so much, and it's not about just having fun. Yeah, it's fun. I want you guys to have fun. But more importantly, you can have all the fun in the world, and if you don't have Christ, then shame on me. We're not being true to you because ultimately one day we're all going to close our eyes in this world and we're all going to be accountable right before Christ for our entire life. Amen. And if I'm not here telling you guys He loves us and desires that fellowship, man, shame on me. But I want you guys to know that I love you guys. We love you guys. You know, us, us up here, we, we do this first part because we love God our Father and we do our calling. But two, because we love you so much. And the, and the church we need to unite and just reignite our life on fire again. Yeah. It's never too late. I don't care what sin you've gone through. I don't, know what, I don't care what you're going through this moment. I don't care what you've done. God's a God of restoration. Amen. God will heal. And God has said that I will bless you ten times more. Yeah. Just, just, just follow me. Just follow me. And just proclaiming Christ means nothing. It's a matter of your heart. Fully sold out and submitted to Christ. Submit it. Amen. 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 We're going to pray, and, uh, and then we're going to have fun. And, and as far as the fun goes, you guys don't know, we're going to have a game show up here. And so we're going to have you guys pick teams of four or three, and we're going to have a fun trivia game show. Right? And a lot of food out front too. Let's pray. let I want you guys to just know that Christ is on his throne. So I want you to just kind of visualize and just know that Jesus Christ is on his throne. So, so radiant, so bright, so holy, and so loving. And Father, right now as we come before you, God, we thank you so much, Lord, for what you're doing in our life. 
Father, we know that all things work together for good because you, Lord, are drawing us to make us like the image of Jesus Christ. Father, you have an ultimate plan that we don't understand, but we trust you. And Father, you say that faith is not seen, but still believing. And Father, for some of us here who just kind of fell away or kind of lost that fire because of work or finances or relationships or temptation, God, I pray for restoration like never before. Father, there's, there's no life apart from you. Life is empty, God. We need you, Lord. And Father, I pray that you just make yourself present in our lives. That you reveal to us truth, Father. And as we draw close to you, God, we realize that the enemy will attack harder. But Lord, we know that you have victory. And we have victory in you, Father, that we know remain in you. And that you will do the work, Father. Change our desires, change our lives, change our families. So just draw us closer to you, whatever it takes, God. Even if it takes a storm. Just draw us to you. Father, I thank you so much for the love that you've given us for the, this ministry, Father, that belongs to you. May you bless it. May we have many years to come forth. May there be lots of growth, Father, not just in numbers, but in depth. Father, we love you. And we can't do without you, Lord. Can't do without you. You are so good. You are so merciful, Father. You are so forgiving and you are so gracious. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you guys, we're going to start a game show in about five minutes. We have food out front. Got some food. Come back in here or whatever you want to do. We're going to have some good time. Good fun. All right? Family 
you, you will have the opportunity to collaborate together to get the answer. But if you get it wrong, then points go to the other side of the table. Are we ready? Are you ready? For one point. That's right, one point. The hand that goes up first. The hand that where's your hand clappers? Where's my hand? Where's my hand? Uh, now these questions are related. Let them ask questions. Yeah, clappers. Yeah, clappers. Anybody has a mineral? Alright. Guys, we are short-handed. Guys short-handed. Okay. Here's a sample question. What was Joseph's name? Thank you, ladies. One point for the guys. Joseph. Joseph's name was Joseph. Thank you. Wow. This is going to be a long night, everybody. I can tell you. Mr. Drummer, hold on, hold on. Question number one of the evening. There is no excuses. All right. What animals did Jesus cause to run into the sea and drown? Glory, glory. Glory for one point. What? Why? 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 Pigs! Who said pigs? She said pigs. Who said pigs? One. Same thing. One point for the girls. Get up the line. Hey, 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 let me touch the game. Hey, warm up. Wow. Okay. Maybe we do on section B. Ready? Section B. David's great friend. Really, guys? Lori, for one point. Lori. Lori. Who is David's? Number 86. Alright, ladies, that's two points. Okay. Section C, question 101. Be ready. <laughs> what happened to Elimelech in Moab? Sam. <laughs> Yes, well, like, what happened to the end of the life? They died! Yes, Sam Master! Wow, that's a big two points! That was a tough question, Sam! Ladies! Six ladies! Three guys! Nobody raised their hand. This is FYI. Section C, question 144 here. Who claimed that the golden calf simply came out of the fire? Oh no. And what up? You gotta answer the question. No, no, he did. Five, four, three. Oh boy! That's a tough one. Wow. Who? Did you first? Hey, you gotta come around and this. Once a point is given, you cannot take it back. Wow. Section C, question 147. Question. Who was Jacob's mother? Answer the question quickly. Who? 147, section C. Rachel? No. Oh, no! You have to answer the question. Who is Sarah? Rebecca! Thank you, Nabil. 
Who is Rebecca? Hey, you were supposed to be playing. Uh, did you guys say the first one? Oh, Question 123. Are we ready? Here is the question. Which is the gate that leads to life? Four. Are you gates? Is it the pearly gates? 123? A chance to steal! Which is the gate that leads to life? He answered, he answered for the boys. Sheila!
Let's wait till the raise their hands to the question can you have that. Let's try that one. On this question? Hey Joe, Chris, hello. Okay guys. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna rotate. We're gonna switch things up a bit. You guys are getting too feisty over here. Look at that. Look at that smile. That's a kill. Coming back, we're going to give you the option to leave first. Alright? And you're going to have the option to answer the question or pass the question. Alright? You like that? But before you answer the question, you got to wager how many points you want to wager on the question. Yeah, you have to wager a point. <laughs> so, I have a question in mind. I have to do it that way. The rules stipulate. It's actually going to be Question 182. Why do they answer the question? If they wager. If they want to answer the question, they're wrong. Okay. If they wager. If they want to answer the question, they're wrong. Okay. If they wager first, yeah, wager first. Wager first. Bible knowledge. Two points. Two points. And that can take them to the lead, ladies. That can take them to the lead. Are we <laughs> There's many prizes. But the prize is in heaven. Which city came down from heaven prepared as a bride? Which city came down from heaven prepared as a bride? For two points, for two points, gentlemen. Which city came down from heaven prepared as a bride? Will the clock start now? Final answer. Jerusalem? The New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem. Hey, close enough. Section E. Okay, guys, we can do it. We can come on, Lawrence. Come on, Lawrence. 237, Section E. Ladies, the clock starts now. Okay. Which of David's sons rebelled against him? Jacob's dream at Bethel for three points. Clark. Ladder. All right. Three points. Good job, guys. Boy, what's the score? 11 to 10. This is anybody's game. Ladies? With a maximum of three points, and sometimes we'll have a double bonus question. Okay, we'll <laughs> yeah, we have a 
three, two, one. Max three. Max three. You can't do it. Three points. What are the names? Bob starts now. <laughs> of Joseph's parents. Oh my Joseph's parents. Joseph's. 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 Time, sorry ladies, time, you know what happens. No, you say, what time are we going to be home? Where are you at? What time is it? Well, what time? What's your answer? Rachel and Jacob. Rachel and Jacob! Boy, I mean, we might as well give you five minutes on that question. Oh, what? Why are you doing that? Are there any We might as well give you five minutes of that. I think we have a new player. Let's welcome Gina Bertella as she joins the audience as well. Gina, get up here. Michelle, you can't hide back there. Let's get our newlywed Michelle up here. And Mark, who's Mark? Azar. George, get up here. We need guys. George. George. Get up here. Guys, what are you wagering on? Wait, how many For how many points? For one point. There we go. And you have to wait till the question is answered, asked. Okay? Here we go. With one point. To what object does James compare the tongue? Ray. Ray and Will. Three minutes, seconds. What object does James compare the tongue? 236. The runner on the shoe will 